Hi, welcome to Linda's TV show. If it is your first time, you like the channel, you like the program, subscribe and put on your notification bell because it's going to help you to know when I upload a new My viewers, my subscribers, you guys are so amazing. Especially those who always tune in to watch me each time I upload a new Security, for example, um, you know, because there, there are so many areas where there are problems and, and where I think they didn't get it right. Um, but if you're talking about security, for example, the first thing this, this government has to do is to cultivate and develop the will, the political will, to crush the terrorists. I've said this from the beginning, and I'm saying it today. I've said it privately, and I'm saying it publicly. You need to crush the terrorists. Now, who are these terrorists? On the one hand, you have Boko Haram in the northeast primarily, and then you have the Fulani herdsmen, that is the killer Fulani herdsmen, in the northwest. They, these are the two main problems that we have in Nigeria today. And the government has to crush them. In, in terms of Boko Haram, for example, um, when President Goodluck Jonathan was in power, he actually went out of his way and he ensured that we had help from foreigners. He brought in people, I think they were South African mercenaries or whatever it is, and they did a, an excellent job. Now, forget about the disinformation that has been put out there. At the time of the election, you and I knew very well, the whole of the Northeast had been cleared of Boko Haram, ex except for Sampisa Forest. That was primarily the work of the Nigerian army in conjunction with, um, with, with, with foreign mercenaries that were contracted to do the job, and they did an excellent job. Now, that's what we need to do there today. That's what I believe, because... Let's swallow our pride and let's understand that we need help. You go to the Northwest, the same thing is happening, where you have an influx of foreign Fulani uh, killers. Um, not necessarily just herdsmen, but killers. Most of them don't even have cows. And they are slaughtering our people every day, kidnapping for ransom. We need to afford the same treatment to that side of our country, bring in, strengthen the army, and bring in foreigners to help us to solve that problem. You come down to the south-south. You come down to the south-southwest, where you have massive numbers of these same killer herdsmen in our forests to the extent that the local population are beginning to rise up to say if government doesn't do anything about it we will sweep away all the politicians and we will do it ourselves and that is what Sunday Buhu, for example represents now in order to solve that problem the military has to go down there and kill every single one of them flush them out you go to the southeast you have to ensure that there's equity and justice you stop killing the local people there and instead you face those that have come to kill them from outside and you certainly stop bombing your own people People. That is another way of solving this problem. Uh, there are so many. The South-South, again, is beginning to rise up right. in insurgency, making threats to the unity of the country. You've got is to appease them. You've got to bring it. everybody together in love. And, of course, in the Middle Belt, which is, a very, which is probably the most hardest hit, hit area over the last five years, you've got to stop the targeting of, of, of both Christian and Muslim populations by these same foreign killer Fulani herdsmen. They are not primarily, they're not Nigerians. 90% of them are non-Nigerians that come through our borders and have just taken Nigeria as a war zone where they can kill, rape, pillage, kidnap, and extort money from each and every one of us. And I do not believe the response right. has been strong. I think we need to come together, perhaps consider forming a forming bank? government of national unity across party lines and doing something about this problem. Those that are stuck in the past and don't see the wisdom and reaching out, even with adversaries from the past, are, are, are simply ignorant and they simply don't even know what politics is all about. We have a major problem today. It's not about intra-party politics or inter-party politics. We still have our differences. It's not about policy. We don't all have to agree on policy. It's about saving our nation. And I will sit with anybody from any party that has any ideology, providing that person wants peace and progress. And that's how a sensible person ought to be behaving. So I lose no sleep over that sort of thing. It's to be expected. And uh, it's the first time I've heard about somebody being rejected when, in fact, they never made an application for anything. So I think we should move on from there and really talk about security. All right. Um, but I mean, you asked me a question earlier, which I think is far more important about how to move forward. One of the things I'll tell you right now is this. If you want good security in this country and solve the security problem, you need to begin a process of opening negotiations with people like Sunday Igbohu, who represent 90 percent of Yoruba people in this country today in their thinking and open negotiations and deprescribe an organization like IPOB. I believe this strongly in order for us to move forward as a nation. Anybody that has not killed anybody, I think we should sit and talk to. And I think we need to come together, build bridges, talk to even past enemies, past adversaries in order to save Nigeria. So this is 
is well beyond party politics. It's bigger than politics. It's bigger than party. Leaders make decisions that may be difficult and painful sometimes and make uh, sacrifices in order to move the country forward. Chief and Anika, we, we just have about to 60 be able seconds to, to ensure the end of the that program. we have peace in this uh, country, understanding, and we move the country forward. We have just about 60 seconds, but I don't know how we're going to do it. There are two questions that I'd like to ask you, but I don't know how we can get these two questions answered in just 60 seconds. Uh, the, the first is uh, going to be the issue of your party. It seems to be like, it looks like things are falling apart. And uh, uh, a lot of uh, internal bickerings in your party. I'd like you to touch on that and uh, perhaps also touch on what is happening between the governor of Benway State and that of Bauchi, they both have disagreed on this issue of security. You have taken sides, obviously, because I read about your comments about uh, this situation. Uh, if in 30 seconds you can answer that, then, then I can actually pose our last question on the program for you. It's amazing. Well, let me, let me put it to you like this. First of all, I don't see any rancor within the PDP. I see disagreements here and there. That's natural in any family. People are coming together. The party's strong. The party's bold. The party's looking to the future. There may be a few people that are not happy. Uh, I know the party leadership is working hard to bring everybody on board. And uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, so there's certainly no disarray. Uh, there may be a few disagreements here and there. But we're working on it. And I have absolute confidence in the party leadership that these matters will be worked out. And so that's number one. Number two, um, the issue of um, my good friend, uh, Governor Bala Mohammed, and also Governor Ochum. I, I sympathize with Governor Ochum and the people of Benway State over what they've been subjected to for the last five years. I have spoken out more than anybody else about the killings that their people have been subjected to by armed militants and Fulani herdsmen and killers in, in uh, Benway State. More than anybody else, I've spoken, even more than Ochum himself, even though I'm not from there. Um, However, on this, on this issue, uh, what, what, I did, well, what did Bala say? Bala Mohammed of Bauchi said that um, uh, the Fulani herdsmen are entitled to carry AK-47s um, that in order to protect themselves and to protect their cows. I disagree with that. I don't think anybody should be allowed to carry weapons. And if, we do carry, if they do carry weapons, let all of us carry weapons. That was my position. Uh, what, and, and of course, Otom also disagreed with that. However, where he, I think, got it wrong was when he said that Bala Mohammed himself is a terrorist um, because he, he voiced that opinion. Now, I've known Bala Mohammed since 2005. I've known him when I was Minister of Aviation. I knew him when he was in the Senate. I knew him when uh, we were in the Minister's Forum together. I knew him when we were in detention together. I've known him, we're close. And I can tell you, he and I have come together to face the real terrorists who at one point wanted to lead our party, the PDP, and who we joined forces and threw the man out. He wanted to be our national chairman. And I know how strongly he feels about killing other people. He's not a killer, he's not a terrorist, but we may disagree, and we do disagree on a number of fundamental issues. But to call him a terrorist, I felt, I felt the governor, Tum, with the greatest respect to him, went a little bit too far. That's not right. Bala Mohammed at all. I so, know him, and I will always stand up for my right. friends. So, if not for Bala Mohammed and people like that, we're, we're obviously out of time, but he uh, Chief Anikaudi, if you succeed. can touch on this in 20 seconds, uh, it will be good. The politics of zoning has been a major, has been made popular by the PDP and is now like a, an unwritten rule. Where do you think will be fair for the presidency to be zoned to in 2023? Just in 20 seconds, please. Well, it, it all depends on which party you're talking about. Um, for me personally, um, I think the idea of a, of a southern presence is a very attractive thing because what's been happening over the last would have been eight years by 2023 is something that, uh, you know, has divided our country. I mean, nobody can deny that. And uh, nationalism, Yoruba nationalism, Igbo nationalism, the quest for Dudwa, the quest for Biafra, the quest for Niger Delta Republic. And these are very, very strong right now. The overwhelming majority of the young people believe in these causes. And therefore, you need to make the South feel at peace. You need to give them something to hold on to. However, that might not even solve the problem. However, there are some people that believe that politics is a game of numbers. Why should it go? Go to the south some may want to keep it in the north it all depends on which party you're talking about and when the time comes we'll look at that we will all make an input we'll all participate in that decision and we'll identify who it is that can rule this country together in 2020 that can rule this country well from 2023 onwards and bring us back pull us back from the brink chief femi fanny Kaude, chieftain of the uh, of the pdp and a former aviation minister thank you for your time tonight with us on the program very much
welcome to my channel. If this is your first time or first day of coming across my YouTube channel or seeing my face, you are highly welcome. Let me comment to my next canal. My name is Linda Chukwezi. It comment as Miguel. That red button that says subscribe and you turn on the notification bell so that you'll be able to get information okay. on the bis zum nächsten video und einen schönen tag tschüss, tschüss. bis mein yes, subscribe bis. to linda's tv show what are you waiting for click on that red button that says subscribe you turn on the notification bell so that you'll be getting more updates from me leave your, your comment down below and share this video with your friends families and colleagues until we meet again in my next video bye bye